How are you doing? Hey, like we talked on the phone, what? Three days Yesterday, I think. Yeah. Day before. <laughs> hey, Teresa, how are you doing? Real good. Real Thanks good. again for the flowers. Terry yeah. loved them. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh. Yeah. oh, okay. Okay. I actually sound yeah. like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you couldn't have done any better. Okay. Yeah, very good commercials. I like your radio Thanks. commercials, too, Teresa. I retired with John Gerson. Center of attention. There you go. Then you got to Teresa. You know, you know, I like Teresa a little bit. You know. Oh yeah, you got her up there twice. Okay, yeah. Yeah. we go on Pat. Actually, real well. That's, I mean, that's why we're. This is uh, the last county we're doing today. Uh, but uh, they finish up today actually in Davenport at noon. They're doing 24 or 99 counties in 24 hours. They're hitting. Uh, uh, we started yesterday with Marshalltown. Then we did Toledo and Tama. Then we went to Vinton. Then to Waterloo. Then to. Independence, and then we finished up last night at Manchester. Today we started in Elkader, we're in Old Wine uh, just a half hour ago, and now we're finishing up here in Waverly. And then we're doing a press conference this afternoon in uh, Waterloo, yeah, Blackhawk on uh, Social Security and Medicare. But the big part we're just pushing for, we've got eight days for the election, so the big part we're really pushing is, is the absentee ballot request. There's still about 30% of those people have not turned in. And so, quite frankly, we need to make sure those people get it turned in. This was a huge problem in 2010. Exactly. We need to make sure those folks get them in. If we get them in, we will be in good shape on Election Day. But if we don't get them in, um, we could have another 2010 all over again. So we're wanting to make sure that we, first of all, thank you for all of your work. We really do appreciate what you've done. But secondly, we've got eight days to go. We need to make sure we get Teresa across the finish line, we get Bruce across the finish line, myself. If we have another 2010, uh, none of us are going to get elected. This is going to be a long night. So we got to make sure that we get people out to vote. Um, and quite frankly, we've got a lot more sporadic voters than Republicans. So we've got to focus on making sure we get that done. Um, and then uh, the other part, too, is the part that we're going to keep talking about until Election Day. You can see it in Bruce's ads as well as mine. Um, we're focused on Medicare and Social Security. Um, my opponent has openly talked about, I mean, in both debates, he talked about he wants to raise the retirement age, he wants to reduce benefits, and he wants to allow young people to invest their money on Wall Street. And if you do those three, and here's the other part. In other words, you've got a benefit that we've all, you know, that's an earned benefit. That's something that you've paid into your whole life to get when you retire. And if he gets his way, you'll work longer for less. And along with that, he wants to take Medicare and voucherize it so that you have to go out and purchase your own health insurance. So, you know, I'm very much opposed to that. We, we're the only group that's been endorsed by the, uh, the, National, uh, the National Association to Preserve uh, Social Security and Medicare. Um, and when they've seen what he's had to say, they are vehemently opposed to him. But along with that, um, the other part, though, too, is this is something that he continues to openly talk about. He talked about it in the two debates. And the first thing you'll hear is Medicare isn't solvent until the year. He says it's in, well, it's solvent until the year 2037. That's the big part. So there's no rush to do anything. And quite frankly, my answer is raise the cap. Right now, there's a hundred. You're, you tax it to $117,000 a year. We've got people like my opponent who might have been making a million dollars a year, and all of a sudden. He stops paying it in February. Why can't he pay in the whole year just like everybody else? And if you're making good money in this society, you should be willing to help those out who are also getting, uh, you know, since you're benefiting from our free market society, you should make sure that you pay into programs. Instead, he set up his corporation in Delaware so he could skirt all of his Iowa taxes. So I think there's some huge differences between us, and I, that's why we're going to focus on Medicare and Social Security for the remaining eight days. I think that's the single most biggest difference between the two of us. So I talked to Charles Grassley three or four years ago. He's an old farm boy like I am, and, and actually he's about three miles south of us where he lives. And he told me, I, I walked in the New Hartford elevator, here he come out wearing his old wore out cotton gloves and all, you know, I don't know if it's part of his act or what it is, you know, but he's very down to earth and he knows we're on different sides, but he told me, about Social Security at that time. He said, all we have to do is make a dollar adjustments. We have to go up to, I think at that time, to 127000 
-hmm. That was his thoughts. That was, as I say, three or four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said Social Security would be okay, but he has to kind of go along with the, the group, you know, you don't hear that from him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I got to compliment you on your debates, debates, because the other guy was so junior high, I thought, you know, I said, there you go again, you know, a career politician, that crap, this, and I had a lot of trouble not using profanity. But you, know, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you were so cool about that as a kid, say, you know, you, you just never recognized, and, and he just made an ass of himself, as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. I hope a lot of people see the same thing. Mm -hmm. But he just kind of kept so negative about everything, you know, and nasty. Were you kind of, you were positive, mm -hmm. and I think that was good. But yeah, I would have had an awful time. Mm -hmm. We tried to watch the debate on live stream. Yeah, yeah, I, it didn't work well. Which one, 9.2 or uh, Channel 7? I think 9.2. Not the most recent one. Oh, the, that, the KCRG one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the live stream on the online was just bad. Our internet was good, it was just the live stream was poor. Was oh, it really? 7 where, uh, uh, can't think of it, John Steele? Yeah. Was he involved? <laughs> That's the channel. Bill Heckroth has told me he's Republican, but actually I, I've been really watching him quite closely. But he's not, he doesn't show that a whole lot. I, I would wonder why anybody in a news organization would show any prejudice one way or the other. Isn't that what news he's is about? Nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. He's fairly nonpartisan. He's an interviewer. Yeah. But I, well, I, I think he's like Republican, he but on his news, that. his news presentation is pretty nonpartisan. Yeah, yeah, he definitely I think he is doesn't show that. But I've talked to him before, I mean, he's definitely a Republican, but he doesn't show that on the news. I mean, I don't think he slants it that way. By the way, I think that your television ads are are excellent. They're very well oh, thank done. You. I, do I, too. I think they I really like the they really present the, the differences between you and Rod Blue very very yeah. well. I think mm -hmm. they're very well done. Much better than. Rayleigh's ads, to tell you the truth, I'm really disappointed with the way he's running his ad campaign. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, so we are. I mean, the big part is uh, we think that that's probably the single biggest issue that we need to talk about. So that's what we're talking about, and that's what our focus yeah. is going to be over the next eight days. So. Yeah. Boy, voucherizing Medicare is just a horrible idea, and, and making Social Security voluntary is even worse. Idea. Yesterday when we were independents and the press was in the room, I was actually shocked when somebody said, well, that's a terrible idea for seniors for one reason only. So what's that? And he says, I'm 75 years old. He says, I've had a heart attack. I've had open heart surgery. He says, I'm diabetic. He went through all his health problems. He goes, what insurance company is going to cover me with that goofy voucher? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I hadn't thought about it that way. And I thought, yeah, that is true. Because he wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act. And if you do that, you, get you can start discriminating against people on pre-existing conditions. Right. I mean, there's all those things. Yeah. And women have to start paying more for their health insurance because the Affordable Care Act says you cannot base your policies on, on their sex. So men and women now are treated the same. Women, for, the, for as long as I know, have been paying higher than men. That's not the case anymore. And so, the, I mean, they are attacking all women when they talk about um, repealing the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. I was say, uh, how how do you feel that the camp the campaign overall has been has been uh, going going for you, uh, sir? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I th uh, I think it's going very well. Um, it's a tight race. We know that. Well, that's why we're uh, we're going to continue to work hard right up till nine o'clock on uh, a week from tomorrow night. And uh, uh, the big part is we're going to continue to focus on the issues I talked about, especially Social Security and Medicare. I think they're the biggest differences between me and my opponent. My opponent's opposed to minimum wage. He, he wants states to set that. Uh, along with that, he doesn't think we need to address the fact that women don't make as much as men. Uh, but even more so, he wants to, the two probably most prominent programs that have been created in the last 80 years has been Social Security and Medicare. Republicans opposed both of those when they attempted, or when Roosevelt created the Social Security program in the 1930s, Republicans opposed it. In the Medicare and Medicaid debate in 1965, again, Republicans opposed it. And here we are 80 years later after Social Security has been around, and everybody accepts it and thinks it's a good program. Same thing with Medicare. It's coming up on its 50th anniversary, and what do we have? Republicans want to privatize Social Security, privatize Medicare, and dismantle the programs. So I think, you know, it's the same, it's, it's the same verse but a different song in a different year, and that's unfortunate because most people agree that Social Security is a great program. They believe Medicare is a great program and Republicans are saying they're terrible and we've got to uh, find a way to fix them when they don't need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, would, uh, now, of course, uh, the, the, one, of the, uh, one of the things also that uh, 
Repub the Republican candidates, whether it be Joni or or, or or Rod, or even or, or any other ones, one of their planks is to repeal the the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas there's been talks on your side, actually, rather than repeal it, just to improve it, fix it. Uh, how, what are some things that you would think would be done with the ACA? Well, I think uh, you hit the nail on the head. Um, Americans don't want it repealed now; they want it improved. We need to improve the website so that we don't have problems where it comes down. Along with that, we need to create incentives for more insurance companies to get into those cooperative health plans. Walmart currently isn't in it. Our goal needs to be to get more insurance companies in it so it's a more competitive environment and it brings down the cost. Mm -hmm. Along with that, we need to see what we need to do for states like Wisconsin. Iowa and Illinois have both, have both um, <clears throat> opted into the Medicaid expansion. Uh, unfortunately, some states like Wisconsin haven't. We need to see what incentives we need to to entice them in, mm -hmm. or quite frankly, give more enticements to the states that have opted in so that it maybe encourages states like Wisconsin to join. I think that those are the things that we need to focus on. We need to make sure that insurance companies can't discriminate against people when they get sick, that they can't discriminate against them based on pre-existing conditions, that kids are able to keep their health insurance through college, uh, and we also need to, besides those things, we also need to make sure that we uh, keep a focus on the whole issue I was talking about earlier. Uh, women now get the same health insurance policy that a man does. Um, I think it's ludicrous that based on your sex, based on the fact that you can have children, you could actually um, uh, increase their benefits. In fact, you know, for Republicans, that should be anti-family and anti-life. And for some reason, they don't see it that way. Um, but I think Democrats uh, are very much wanting families to be uh, successful and succeed. What would you consider possi the possibility if the, if the swing does go towards single payer to make a uh, make an expansion of Medicare to all ages? Mm -hmm. I think uh, with Medicare, I think here's what I th I would support a public option, and I think the big part is with Medicare. Um, I think the one thing that they did make a mistake in the debate was they should have met, moved the Medicare age from age 65 down to 55. The single biggest thing I heard from uh, from uh, older Iowans, not older Iowans, but bet the ones between age 55 and 65. The boomers. Yeah, the boomers that want to retire, but the single biggest reason they don't retire is they don't have access to health insurance, and because how much rates can go up, people wouldn't retire even though they knew they could retire and not have to depend on Social Security right, right away. They would have loved to see the Mer Medicare age grow from 65 to 55, and I think that's the single biggest thing we could have done in the health care debate, and that's probably something we should revisit. Because if you do have a lot of these uh, people that do want to retire, it opens up economic opportunities for young people to go into those jobs. And, and then, uh, uh, now what about the, uh, about the, the, the ads overall? I mean, uh, especially, I don't know if it was, I don't remember if it was actually Bloom's campaign or one of his, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, PACs mm -hmm. showing, showing your, your rant from 20, 2011. We have a, uh, we have a letter to the editor that explain that uh, from somebody from uh, Anamosa uh, that that had said, basically told the whole background story about that. But what about what about some of these ads? Some of these uh, some of these ads that uh, that that depict you as a, a quote angry career politician, mm -hmm. and 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 then and then how about the, about about all the ads that are in this this year's campaign? Well, the the first thing I'll just say is um, in regards to the ad with me. Uh, what I was doing was I have passion. Mm -hmm. I have passion for the middle class. I have passion for workers. And Republicans were, one, rolling back. They wanted to do what Wisconsin did. They wanted to roll back workers' rights. And secondly, and more importantly, they, they shut off the switchboard. Mm -hmm. For the first time in the history of the state of Iowa, we were debating a very contentious bill on that Friday. They made a conscious decision that day not to open the switchboard because too many people were calling in to Republicans asking them not to vote for that bill. Mm -hmm. So their answer was, instead of taking the calls or sending them to voicemail, they just made the decision they wouldn't even allow people access to their elected officials. The only way you could contact them that day was through email. And, you know, that was wrong. Um, you know, the bottom line is that's a lack of transparency. So when I saw that, I was outraged. And I, quite frankly, I thought it was passion to protect workers mm -hmm. and their rights. And I just consider that passion for the middle class. Mm -hmm. So if Republicans want to distort who Pat Murphy is, that's fine. I'm very comfortable with who I am. And, I, you know, I think I've done a very good job of uh, working for the middle class. And I've heard from a lot of people that say, 
you know, I didn't see an angry politician there. I saw somebody with passion in their face. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I think people want is a well-seasoned politician that even when they're angry, they don't show emotion because they care. I care about people. I, I wanted to work to increase access to health care, wanted to raise the minimum wage, I want to protect Social Security, and I, I'm going to fight like the Dickens for anybody that tries to take those away. All right, now uh, swing over to Teresa. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, how things are going? Oh, oh, you on the Affordable Care Act. Too, so. <laughs> Take care. Oh, right. Take care. And what, what about your, your race against Sandy? Uh, how do you feel about, about your campaign, Teresa? My campaign in general, I feel very, very confident uh, in my campaign that I will be successful mm -hmm. in um, winning the election. Now, uh, people are saying that uh, some some uh, some man, uh, I, I don't know if there, there's many analysts, but uh, voter voter records show that Bremer County is a little heavier Republican. How do you how do you get over that uh, um, that hurdle? I should say. I've been reaching out to everybody in this district. I've uh, door knocked thousands of doors, and the um, the the feeling from my voters is all about job creation and making sure that everybody has a right to have a job that brings in a living wage. Mm -hmm. And all we want to do is raise our families and educate our kids and prepare them for the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And those are just everyday things and uh, everybody seems to be, you know, uh, in favor of that. So. I think it's good policy. What's the first thing you want to do when the when elected when you get down to Des Moines? I want to make sure that our school system is uh, funded properly, and to expand preschool. Um, the uh, opposition um, hasn't funded our our school system for the last two years. Um, zero allowable growth, and that is totally ridiculous. And that's not good for our economy or for the people of Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a strong, skilled workforce in our communities, and we need to start at preschool, all the through through um, pre-K through 12, and our community colleges and our public and private universities are our greatest assets, and I will aggressively advocate for them. And. Uh for for either for both both of you or either either of you, uh, um, looks like that. Uh, um, except except for the very, the uh, top of the state ticket, uh, looks like Democrats are uh, Democrats uh, have a very very much a fighting chance in the, in, in this area. Um, unfortunately, uh, for, uh, for, to some, uh, uh, Senator Hatch's campaign is just. Uh, hasn't been uh, hasn't been gaining a lot of footing. But what do you think about the, about your party's uh, prospects on the fourth? Oh, I feel real good. I feel um, first of all, I feel that uh, Bruce Bradley is going to win. It's going to be a tight race, but I, I think he'll win. I feel very optimistic about my own race. We know it's going to be tight, but we're going to work very hard, and we're going to stand for democratic values: protecting Social Security, protecting Medicare and Medicaid, making sure that people at the bottom of the pay scale get a pay raise. Uh, those are all things that the Republicans are opposed to. But more importantly, it's also not just about those races. It's about making sure that we get control of the, the first the, First of all, the Iowa Senate gains seats, and more importantly, that the Iowa legislature, the Iowa House, goes back to being Democratic. When, we were, when the Democrats were in control, we raised the minimum wage two years before the federal government did. We increased access to health care for children. Along with those things, too, we addressed teacher pay, which had dipped to 42nd before Democrats took control. Tuition at the region run universities had actually went up 90% in the four years before we were in control. We kept control costs up, uh, between 2 and 5%. Created universal preschool that so 20,000 children have access to universal preschool. Those are the things that Democrats will do and Teresa will work on in the Iowa legislature when she's elected. I, I feel real good about the, both the prospects of Teresa getting elected here and, and winning this seat back for the Democrats. I feel real good about Rick Edwards up in, uh, in Winnesheek and Clayton and Fayette County. Um, and I feel real good about all the incumbents in the 1st District. I feel Kim Huckstad has a very good chance in Jackson County as well. And Christy Keast in Lynn County. We, we think that there's the excellent potential that they're going to gain four or five seats and have control of the Iowa House. So I feel very good about Democratic prospects uh, over the next eight days. But we've got to keep working hard.